ready? Yes. Ki le kachtov natati lachem Torati al tazovu Derachea Darke noam וכל נתיבותיה שלום. השיבנו, אדוני אליך ונשובה, חדש ימינו כקדם. Now you're ready. Now I can see that you're ready. that we're smiling, we're connecting ourselves to all of the holy souls that by their merit we're here sitting today enjoying the will of Hashem to commit ourselves to Him with love, with eternal bondings, never to stop the real connection to the Creator is a connection that based on love, on endless love, an inner connection, a spiritual connection, connection that don't have no limits, no borders, something that is beyond this world, a spiritual inner connection, relationship that based on healthy and positive communication, speaking to the Creator, revealing our hearts to Him, opening our mouths and just sharing and telling Him our will. Prayers that are coming out from the heart are prayers of truth. And the Creator is close to everyone that will call Him with truth. So that's the way for us to connect Him is just to be open and honest and to tell Him our hearts, to connect ourselves to Him from an honest, healthy, positive place. That's the power that we received from heaven to bring down complete redemption to our nation. And mainly like that it's written that by the merit of righteous women we've been redeemed And by the same merit, we will redeem right now, in those days. Amen. Amen. This is the month of Elul, the first day of Elul. Elul is the month of Tshuva. And we're all yearning for that merit to come back to Hashem. But we need to understand what it means. And it's true that we heard so many classes about that. And we read about Elul and the month of Tshuva and the concept of Tshuva to come back to Hashem in so many books and in so many lectures and in so many conversations. And still, if we would understand what it means to do Tshuva, it would be behind us already. We would do it. The fact that we're still hoping and yearning one day to complete our Tshuva means that we have not understand that message completely. So by the merit of all the souls that brought us here today, we're going to bring some more light on that point and hopefully we will know how to connect ourselves with threads of love and unity and health and happiness. Amen. Amen. To do tshuva, it's to come back to Hashem. So first of all, to come back to a place, it means that you already been in that place once before. So to come back to Hashem, it's to come back to something that is familiar to you. And what is familiar to a person? The truth. Hashem Elokechem Emet. Your God is the God of truth. 
we know that in the future to come, when Hashem will reveal Himself to His people, so then the righteous people will look at Him and will say, Ze Hashem kivinulo. That is Hashem that we were hoping for. That is Him. Means that they will see His face and going to recognize His face. They already saw Him. And now they're seeing Him again. And that's the meaning of the verse that is saying, Divrei emet nikarim. That we have the ability to recognize words of truth. If now I'm going to tell you something that is real, a word of truth, like I'm going to ask you, for an example, is your name Leah and your name is Leah? So you will know, yes, it's me, I'm Leah. If I ask you, do you live in this and that street? Do you? Yes. Why? You recognize it because it's the truth. If I'll tell you, are you happy? Are you sad? You're going to know exactly if you're happy in that moment or sad. Why? Because you know the truth. To come back to Hashem, it's to come back to those familiar places of truth that you have inside of yourself. To come back to Hashem, it's to come back to your soul. To come back to your inner connection to the Creator, to infinity. Inside of every person there is a holy soul. And that soul is a godly soul. Is chelek eloka mimal. It's part of heaven. It's part of the Creator Himself that He brought down to this world. Part of Him. He created us in His shape, in His figure. And we know that He doesn't have no shape and figure. So how can it be that He created us in a physical body with a shape and a figure? The real explanation is that our bodies are not who that we really are. Our bodies just carrying our souls. And our souls is who that we really are. So when you are connecting yourself to your spiritual being, to your true self, you're connecting yourself to that part of heaven that lives inside of your body. That that is the real you. That that is your eternal part. That that is the part of you that lives eternal life. Always. Even in a physical body. Even inside your vehicle that is taking you from one point to the other. Your soul is connected 24-7 to the real source of life. To the Creator Himself. And to reconnect ourselves to Him is to connect ourselves to happier, happier life, to positive life, to inspiring life, to life of hope. When we see the blessings and from the other side we see the curses, we see the light and we see that there is also darkness. We see that there is hope. To connect ourselves to the good, to the Creator, it's to connect ourselves to happiness, to positive life, to inspiring life. And when you do that, when you follow the voice of heaven, you will be answered. Your prayers will be answered. But when a person is trying to connect himself to the Creator because of his fears, because of his anxieties, because the people told him to, so then he will lose the real connection and all of his work will be empty. All of his work and stress and sweat and tears and sorrow and effort will not bring him to the real purpose that he's hoping to achieve. And then he will look back on 20 years of serving and he will be so frustrated, so sad, so upset, so disappointed. How can it be? That for 30 years, for 50 years, I'm praying and I'm not being answered. Because you are not really praying. It's not you that is praying. It's not you that is calling Hashem from the heart. It's your fears. It's your stress. It's your anxieties. It's not your soul that is calling the Creator. 
When your soul will start calling the Creator, you will feel such pleasant while serving Hashem. You will feel such joy and happiness that you won't be able to stop yourself from calling Him again and again. And you're going to stop waiting for the reward because the reward for you will be to pray, to connect, to do. Then you will feel rewarded already by giving, already by doing. You will not look for no kind of reward in this world. You won't care about this world anymore because your attachment to this Creator, to the truth, will be an inner connection that is not dependent in the physical reward, that is not dependent in the house that you live in, the money that you have, your health, and nothing else that comes in this world. Just your connection will be an inner and spiritual connection through your prayer, through your heart. And to reach that level is not hard at all. It's in your mouth and in your heart to keep and to do. You just need to believe in yourself and to become one with your true self and to be loyal to your inner voice and to follow your heart and to commit yourself to that divine truth that lives inside of yourself. And not always to listen to what the people tell you, even if those people so-called important and so-called righteous. And you must listen to the voice of Hashem that is speaking and guiding you from the mouths of people that are around you. But you're not allowed to ignore your inner voice, the voice of your soul. Because if you're going to ignore the senses and the wisdom and the abilities that God planted inside of you, so for what? He created you in such an amazing and inspiring and wise way to give you senses that you can smell, that you can see, that you can hear, that you can feel, that you can sense. Why He gave you those talents that you can use? Why He gave you those desires that you will feel, that you will want so many things, if not for you to use them to serve Him with? That's the real purpose of life. That you will use the tools that God gave you and you're just going to bring them into Avodat Hashem to serve Him with all your powers. The powers that God gave you. And like that He commanded us to love Him with both of our inclinations, with your good inclination and with your bad. Ve'ahavta et Hashem elokecha bechol levavcha. And with all of your power. And with everything you have. Everything that you received from Him. So if now you received from Him the desire to dance. And let's say that you're a person that when you hear a certain beat, it makes you move. So what can you do with that? You're part of a very firm community. You cannot go and dance in Walmart like me. You're not that kind of type, you're not that kind of person, but in your house, I'm asking you, or like you, I see. You're dancing in Walmart? Oh, amazing. So I'm not alone, thank God. But in your house, in your living room, in your kitchen, in your office, in your unique place, that in that place you're alone with Hashem, in that place cannot you dance with Him? Can't you dance with Hashem? Is it not allowed for you to connect yourself in the most modest and humble way that you can find? Can't you do that? Can't you sing to Hashem like Miriam the prophet that she was singing to Hashem? That she was playing to Hashem? Can't you do that? Can't you really connect yourself to Hashem from that inspiring flame of fire that lit inside of you and really to become that person that you are? Only if you're going to believe in yourself that what that you're doing actually presents the truth, the inner voice of your heart, it will connect you completely to the source of love and kindness and health and truth that exists in this world. 
Because if you express your true self, you express the light of God that is treasured inside of you. And if you're not expressing your inner voice, your inner holy desire to connect yourself to Him with honesty, with the gifts that He gave you, with the talents that He planted inside of you, so you're denying His creation. Because He created you in a way that is unique and special. And if you're not going express to express it, so you're putting darkness and coverings on His beautiful light. So yes, it's true. You need to find the right outlet. You need to find the right way to express yourself. A way that you're not going to be hurt by. A way that will express your will. A way that will express your real beauty. A way that will express your honesty and your real connection and bonding to Hashem. You need to connect yourself to Hashem through that honest place of truth that lives only inside your unique heart. But you must do that. For the sake of our nation, you must do that. For the sake of your sisters, you must do that. And you must give that strength to the rest of your people, to the rest of your beloved ones, to bring courage and strength and hope to the heart of those ones that are seeking Him with truth. And to plant that seed of truth, to be brave and to be strong and to be who that you really are in the heart of all of those ones that are seeking for Hashem. Because to follow those guidings that are terrorizing us and planting fear into our bones is not the path of Hashem. Is not the path of the Creator of this creation. The Creator of this creation is the God of truth, is the God of mercy, is the God of kindness. Father of mercy, Father of kindness. The good Creator that we barely can see. But why we cannot see Him? Why it's so hard to find His kindness? Because we are not following our hearts. Because we're too scared and too afraid to reveal that unique light that lives inside of us. We all know that He's so kind. We all want to hug Him and to find Him finally. We all want to reach that amazing, inspiring point that we and Him will be one. That everything will be perfect. So why are we not doing it? Because we don't believe in ourselves. Because we're not expressing our honest thoughts. Because we're not sharing with our desire to connect ourselves to Him from an honest, sincere place. And just to allow ourselves to be sensitive and to laugh. People today in this generation cannot laugh out loud, cannot cough, cannot blow their nose, cannot sneeze, cannot talk. That's crazy. That's crazy. If you're afraid to sneeze because you're afraid people will think something about you, do you think other people don't sneeze? Do you think other people don't laugh? I met a person after one of my classes, she was laughing and she was hiding her mouth. And she's laughing like that. And I'm telling her, please do me a favor, don't hide your smile, laugh. <coughs> Why do you need to hide your smile when you're laughing? That's so crazy. That's so low. It means that we went so far from Hashem if we cannot smile. If we're embarrassed to smile. If we cannot allow ourselves to laugh. Is it not allowed for a Jewish woman to laugh? Is it not allowed for a woman to be happy? Is it not allowed for you to be happy? You're afraid to be happy. Because you've been hurt. I hear you. Because you've been ashamed, I hear you. Because you've been insulted, I hear you. I've been in those places. I've been hurt as well. I've been ashamed as well. But the fact that those people think themselves as someone that can rebuke others, can break the self-image of another soul, can insult 
a fragile, sensitive, holy person, is that a good enough reason for me to shut myself down? For me not to laugh because the day will laugh at me? Who are they if not boxes with teeth? If not just masks of the evil inclination that try to destroy my true connection to the Creator? Like that it's written, Ki besimcha tetzehu, that you can go out from all kinds of exile only with a smile, only when you're happy. If you're not happy, if you're sad and depressed, you cannot serve Hashem. And that's what Hashem is telling us. That you were not serving me with joy. I want you to be happy. How you can be happy? Money will make you happy. Houses will make you happy. I saw the richest people in this world and they are the most miserable people that I saw in my life. They feel that they have enemies and they feel that everyone are cheating at them and they feel that their money is always in danger and they feel betrayed and they know for sure that they must protect their fortune and they must protect their mansions and their houses and they have and they cannot connect themselves to a simple class. They cannot do one hour of Yid Bodedut. They cannot talk to Hashem. They're not able to sit one hour with a book and to just be happy learning some nice Midrashim. They're not able to. Why? Because they're trapped in this world. In what that this world is, op- is, is, is offering them. Oh, follow the idols of money, follow the idols of beauty, follow the idols of honor and respect. Make sure, guarantees that you will be protected, that you'll have the best lawyers, that you'll have the best doctors, that you will be surrounded with with strong, powerful people. That's all a joke when Hashem decides to take a person to the world to come. It's all a joke. It's all a joke. Compared to one moment of real connection, of an inspiring prayer, of expressing your heart in, fi- in front of the King of all kings. When you connect yourself to the Creator in the Mikveh, in Shacharit, when you talk to Hashem while you dance, while you're happy, while you're praising Him when you say Hallel, when you find any kind of connection, there is nothing that compares to that. So why to spend only one minute a week like that and not to bring all of our lives to that place? Why not to be inspired 24 hours a day? Why not to connect ourselves to the Creator with honesty? When you say the truth, God is with you. When you are who that you are, so the channels of your soul are shining. The pure water of your soul are coming down from the world to come to this world. And you can find the advice for every person and for every situation in your life. And you are connecting yourself to Him in every psalm of Tehillim. And in every prayer that's written in the Siddur. But when you're serving Him from fear, from stress, because you're afraid what other people will say, So you're not serving Him, you're serving your fears. You're feeding your fears. Because after you're going to try to do more and more, you are always going to feel empty. You are always going to feel that you're not doing enough, that you're not fulfilling your destiny, that you're not fulfilling your obligations and what you can do more and how you can do more. And it's not gives you life. It doesn't give you life and desire to continue. It just takes the power and lowering your batteries. And you're finding yourself lost and confused. And I'm praying for 20 years and I'm not being answered. And I finished all the book of Tehillim last Shabbat and I couldn't feel anything. And I'm standing and I'm reading from the Siddur and I don't feel no connection. How can it be, I'm asking you, if not that the main light The main part is missing from that book. The main part is the intention. A prayer without an intention is like a body with no soul. So bring the soul back to your own bodies. 
Bring the intention, the intention. Which intention? Your intention, your thought. Express your heart in your prayer. And if it's hard for you from the Sidhu, if you don't understand the words of the prayer, maybe because that it's written in the holy language and it's not your mother tongue, maybe because it's that reason, if you find it so hard to pray. So, after you finish praying from the Sidhu, say another word to Hashem. Express yourself in your own words for five minutes a day. Maybe talk to Him for ten minutes a day. While you're alone, in your porch, in your backyard, in your room, in your family room, in your living room, in the kitchen, drinking your cup of tea, talk to Hashem. Have a daily meeting with Hashem on a cup of tea and two fortune cookies. <laughs> Why not? Is it not allowed to drink in front of Hashem? You think that Hashem is not seeing you when you drink your coffee? So what's the problem? Between the coffee to those cookies to say, Shalom Aleichem, Father. How are you doing? That's how I'm opening my Idbodedut. First of all, I say, Shalom Aleichem. Good morning. Boker Tov. How are you doing, Hashem? Once I remember, I was so happy after saying my first words in Idbodedut. I said to Hashem, Good morning. How was your night? Hashem, you think that Hashem was not, didn't have a night? Hashem was not with us at night? I asked him, I hope everything went well. I hope your children are well. Do you think many people asked him, how is he doing in that day? I don't think so. Do you find a reason why not to ask our father, how is he? And to tell him that we hope that he's fine, that he's happy, that he sees success with his children? Do you think that there is something wrong with it? I don't think so. I think that the Rambam was wise enough to explain to us how we should pray. In Hilchot Filal Rambam, the Rambam Akadosh is explaining to us that we need to talk to the Creator in our own language. It's not a Breslev thing. Hilchot Filah is this, describing and explaining the mitzvah of prayer midoraita from the Bible, how that Avraham and Sarah were talking to God. They didn't have the Sidhu, they didn't have the Tehilim. It had been established many, many years after they already been in heaven. Yitzchak and Rivka, Yaakov, Rachel, Leah, they didn't have no books. They were talking from their hearts. They were going every morning, every noon, every evening to speak with the Creator of the universe, with the unity, with the soul that gives life to the world. And they were communicating with it, with Him, in their own language, asking their own requests, talking about their own problems and issues. How do you think that the Shemona Yisra been established if you learned a little bit Gemara in Masechet Brachot, there is a very long, detailed explanation on the prayer of Chana, our mother, the mother of Shmuel the prophet, Shmuel Anavi. And over there, if you open the Gemara in Masechet Brachot, you think that you, you can lose your mind from the explanation and the quotes of the words of Hanai Menu, how she was asking certain requests from the Creator. She asked Hashem, if you created me in a certain way that I can nurse babies, so how can it be that I don't have a baby to nurse? <coughs> and that was the prayer that gave her that child. She was so open with Hashem to ask Him the hardest questions of them all and to ask to be answered. You know she was also threatening Hashem. She told Hashem, it's written in the Bible, in the Torah that you gave us, that if a woman was suspected on cheating her husband and now the court of Sanhedrin took her and let her drink from the bitter water. And they found her innocent. So she will be conceived. She will be pregnant. So you know what Hashem? If you're not going to give me a child. I'm going to hide from my husband. And I'm going to drink from those bitter water. And I'm going to be found innocent. 
Because I'm not planning to sin, I'm just going to hide. I'm just going to act. And then you will be forced to give me a child. That's the mother of Shmuel Navi. She was a prophet. We learned how to pray Shmuel Isre from her. Those are her prayers. So I'm asking you, why are you not opening your mouth and talking like that? Because you don't believe in yourselves. Because you don't believe in the mercy and kindness and the endless love of Father in heaven to you. Not to us, to you. To Chana, to Rachel, to Simcha, to Leah, to Yocheved, to Susan, to Judith, to you. To you. So you need to work on your faith. Your faith starts with your faith in yourself. That you will understand that God loves you because you're His child. With no connection to how many Psalms of Tehillim you said today. You love your child also with no connection to how many Tehillim he said. You also love him when he's coming all filthy from the backyard. You love him. You loved him when he was just screaming and annoying and waking you up in the middle of the night and doesn't let you sleep and doesn't let you eat and doesn't let you re relax. In those days you loved him the most. If chas Shalom there would be a fire in those days, he would be the first one that you would save. And he was the one that was causing most of your sorrow. Are you crazy? No, you're a mother. And the Father is doing the same. And the Creator, He's doing the same. And that's the secret of Tshuva. That's the month of Tshuva and that's the secret of Tshuva. That Tshuva is a higher level than to be righteous. To come back to Hashem from darkness brings you to a higher level than the levels of the complete righteous people. Like that it's written that in the place of Baal Tshuva that they're standing in, even a complete Tzadik Gamur cannot stand. Why? Because it's not such a big deal to serve Hashem in the light. But to make that distance, to go out from the most filthiest places of the world into the light, to deal with your shames, with your pain, with your sorrow, to be able to confess in front of Hashem, to ask for forgiveness, to be proud of yourself even that you messed up so many times in your life, to say to Hashem and to yourself, I want a second chance, I want another opportunity. Please, I want to come back to you. It takes much more power than to serve Hashem in the light. So us, we don't have a choice, except of making that effort and coming back to Hashem. Because Hashem made us fall to those low places and we cannot stop it. Unless Hashem will help us, we won't be able to stop ourselves from falling and failing. Only when Hashem will help us, only when Hashem will answer our prayers and will protect us completely, we will not fail again. So until then, there is only one thing that we can do. And it's to call him. And it's a free call, so don't be cheap. <laughs> Open your mouth and talk. I have a student that he told me that he was very shy to do hit bodedut. He was afraid to talk to Hashem. He was afraid what people will say when they will see him talking to himself. So he held the phone and he was talking to Hashem. <laughs> and he was pretending to talk in the phone. No problem. Tell Hashem, Hashem, look, I'm as crazy. I'm not able even to talk to you. I feel ashamed in my connection to you, Hashem. I'm sorry. I'm going to use that device for now. <laughs> Say you have a Bluetooth device in your ear. Say, okay, Hashem, hi. But talk to him. Because if you're not talking to him, it means that you gave up on yourself. That's what it means. If you chose only to be religious and not really to have an inner connection to Hashem, it means that you gave up on yourself. Because you need to bring yourself into the mitzvot. 
And if you keep the mitzvot without your soul in them, without the intention, so it's like bodies without a soul. So okay, you brought many, many mitzvot to Hashem, but they are light. They're not in the same quality like mitzvot that have been kept and been made with intention. When you answer Amen on another person's bracha, you give a soul to the angel that he created. Why? Because your Amen means that you believe in what that he's doing, in what that he just said. You agreed with him, so you gave a soul. How can you agree with Hashem when you have so many doubts, when you have so many fears, when you're not accepting the supervision of the Creator in so many ways, when it's so hard for you sometimes to do, to feel, to connect? You cannot. You cannot say Amen on that. When you see a person in sorrow, when you experience sorrow, it's very hard to say Amen on that. It's very hard. So, what needs to be done? A conversation needs to be done. Like in every other relationship, when you have disagreements, when you have these misunderstandings, there is only one way to solve the problems. It's to talk. It's to talk and to talk and to talk and to talk and to talk. And we've been blessed in that power and with that ability to express ourselves, so we must do that. And that's the main obligation. And like that it's written in another place in, the, in Masechet Brachot in the Gemara Akdosha, that Rashi is explaining a verse that is very hard to interpret and to understand. The verse is saying, Kerum zulut livne adam. Say what? Yes, kerum zulut livne adam. You don't understand that verse, not because that you're not speaking Hebrew, the holy language. No, not because of that. The Gemara is asking what's the meaning of that verse because it's very hard to understand because we don't know those words. Kerum zulut livne adam. Okay, to people. What is kerum? What is zulut? We don't know. And then the Gemara is saying, and Rashi is explaining, there are things that are in the top, in the peak of the world, that's Kerum, like in the highest place of them all, that people disrespect. Zulut libn Adam, it's cheap for people. People don't appreciate those things. And Rashi is saying, Kegon Tfila, like prayer. That it's in the peak of the world, that's the main connection to the Creator. And people disrespect that. Not because they disrespect, because they cannot appreciate, because they don't understand the greatness of that gift that we received from heaven. The solution, the only solution, that we received from heaven to come back to Hashem is through prayer. It's through tshuva. To do tshuva, it's to pray to Hashem. To connect yourself to Hashem, it's through prayer. Prayer is something else than reading. You can receive A plus on reading in the end of your life, no problem. But it might be that you never pray to Hashem. To pray, it's from the heart. It's to put your heart into the words. And if you find it hard, to pray from the book because you cannot put your heart, so at least you must do something else except of praying from the book. Because in the book you will not find all of your needs. It doesn't written nowhere that you are stuck with the second month down payment on your mortgage. You won't find it in the Siddur. If your son, he wants to join the army in Israel and you're terrified, it's very hard to find it in the Siddur. It's very hard, but you still want to talk about it with someone and your husband is busy, so... You need to talk to Hashem, right? But it doesn't written in Shmon So you want to say it in Shomat Fila? Say it in Shomat Fila. I don't mind. Just say it. 
I don't mind where, just say it. If someone is insulting you, so just to say laminim ve lamalshidim al tikva, I don't think that it's express all your sorrow. If someone is rebuking you and breaking your spirit, I'm not sure that you can find one verse in Tehillim that will describe humiliations and insultings by people to King David that will really express all of your heart completely that you will be able to feel relieved after saying those words to Hashem. So I think that after you finish saying Tehillim, you need to start talking to Hashem. In your own language, it's allowed. From your own heart, it's allowed. Why? Why it's allowed? Because Hashem wants you to. Because it's a mitzvah. Because that's the way to connect yourself to Hashem, to communicate. Communication is connection. Ways of communication are ways of connection. You're connected to the ones that you communicate with through WhatsApp, through your, your, your text, through your phone, through regular conversation in the grocery store, in shul, in wherever, in your living room. Yeah, I know you're talking in shul. What can you do? You cannot hide it. <laughs> Everyone can hear you in shul. Don't worry. No, not you? Okay. Not her? Okay, there is one woman that is not talking in shul here. Two, oh, three, wow, I'm inspired. Four, wow, five, I believe you. You must understand that God wants you to connect yourself to Him like that you find it to be real. Like that you find that that is the right way for you to connect yourself to Hashem, that's what He wants from you. We're not talking about violating anything. We're talking about finding yourself inside the Torah and Mitzvot. We're talking only about bringing your heart into the prayer, bringing your talents into your house, into your family, into educating your children, into inspiring your beloved ones. If you're not going to express yourself, people around you won't enjoy your spiritual beauty, won't enjoy what that you have to give. For an example, and I gave that example. For a woman to choose vegetables in the grocery store, it takes at least three times more, three times more, that's how you say it? Longer than to a, to a man. That's a fact, at least. <laughs> Why? Because you're more picky. You are thinking more. Why you're thinking more? It takes you more time to pick the right tomato from the piles of tomatoes than to a man. Why? Is it because you're thinking slower than him? The fact and the evidence is that when he's doing shopping, he's bringing not the best quality tomatoes, right? That's why it takes you longer time. Not because that he's better than you, just because you Putting your heart into every tomato, and every cucumber, and every apple, and every pineapple that you choose, right? Yeah. Yes, I learned it from my wife. <laughs> I'm a man, I'm stuck. But you received binayatera, an extra sensitivity, extra wisdom that God gave you that He didn't give us. So, if you're now going to be in a rush, and you're going to run fast, and you're going to ignore your senses, you're going to bring things into your house that will not express your love and how much that you care from your family. And you know why Hashem gave you those senses? That ability from a pile of, of, of seven shirts in the same color, in the same measure, from the same fabric, to choose the fourth one from the pile, because it's a little bit thicker. What? Yes, you can sense it. Me? I'm a man. I cannot feel it. 
Give your husband to feel it, he will take the first one. Okay, he learned from you, he will take the second one from the top. He will never gonna check the sixth one and the seventh one. Why? Because he doesn't have your senses. Why Hashem made you so sensitive? That it can look so crazy. But why? The Ariya Kadosh is explaining, not me. The Ariya Kadosh. The Ariya Kadosh said that everything that a woman brings into her house is tikune shechina. It's completing the shechina kadosha. You sense the spiritual sparks in every fruit, in every vegetable, in every shirt, in everything that you're in charge of. You feel it. And man cannot feel it. So, you must believe in yourself and do your job with a smile. And if it takes you two hours to find your way out from that supermarket, it's okay because you are now doing your job and you need to do it with a smile. You need to believe in yourself and to understand that you are not wasting your time. Because you are doing things now that no one else can do. Because when you're going to bring the right fruits to the house, when you're going to cook the dinner from the things that you brought from the grocery store, you're going to make a different dinner than the dinner that your husband would make. And you will bring the right sparks to your family to eat and to enjoy from in Shabbat. And that's what will bring health and happiness and faith and trust and success to your house. Because you're in charge on those sparks to bring them into their how into your house. At least that's what it's written by Shlomo Amelech in Shira Shirim. That women got that ability. And you need to believe in yourself and stop chasing yourself and blaming yourself. Because when you're blaming yourself and hating yourself and upset at yourself, you don't see the inner soul of yours. You don't see who that you really are. You're blaming yourself and complaining at yourself only because that you're afraid of what that someone else will say. So now you're going to follow your fears instead of following Hashem. So my advice to you is just, I don't know how to say it politically correct. I'm sorry. How you say, don't give a damn? <laughs> don't pay attention. Thank you. Don't pay attention. I'm sorry. I'm an Israeli and I'm not familiar with your language. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Don't care so much. Do your job. You came alone to this world and after 120 years you're going to go out alone from this world. And only your actions and the pure intentions of your heart will follow you and will back you up. And if you were loyal and if you were good and if you were nice and if you were innocent, so those will be the things that you will present in front of the king of all kings. So just be just be who that you are, who that He made you to be, because He planted those senses, that sensitivity, those abilities, those talents, those qualities inside of you. And He gave it to you, so you must use it. You must use it and to inspire other people as well, to let them find their true selves as well. They don't need to follow you. They don't need to follow me. They don't need to follow no one. They need to follow the truth. And the truth is one. So when you will want to find the truth, and when she will want to find the truth, and when I will want to find the truth, we will all find the same truth because there is only one truth. So don't be scared to search for the truth because you will recognize the truth and you will recognize the same truth that I will recognize. You don't need to follow me to be with me in the same place. We like those beams of light that in the end coming back to the same source. Everyone from the place that he been sent to. That's the secret of tshuva, to come back to the place that you started from. You coming back to what that is familiar to you, to what that you know, to what that you remember in the back of your mind. 
to what that only you can sense, to what that only you can feel, to what that only you know that is real and true and exists. So commit yourself to that and serve Hashem with truth, with an unconditional love and do whatever you need to do to bring that love and that truth to the world. And for that you must charge yourself. You must charge your own batteries. It means that you must flow in your own rhythm. You must develop awareness to your inner voice, to who that you really are. A person must always learn only in the place that his heart desires. Only if you feel desire to do something, do it. And if you find yourself that you lack of that holy desire, so don't drop it. Don't stop it. Talk about it with Hashem. Solve your problems with Hashem. Hashem, I find it hard to pray. Please. Help me to find the flame. Help me to find the holy desire to pray. Don't drop it. Don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Don't become a robot. Don't become a soldier. Stay an individual. Serve him with your unique wisdom, with your unique sensitivity. Be your true self. And like that you will please Hashem in the highest way of them all. Like that, all your prayers will be answered because you will be honest while praying. And you're not just going to quote and repeat other people's words. You will also bring your own colors into Avodat Hashem. You will bring the gifts, the diamonds, the pearls, the good stones that God treasured inside of you. You're going to bring them all back to Hashem. You're going to plant those seeds of truth in the hearts of your beloved ones. Don't give up on them. You're the only one that can help them. By the merit of righteous women, we've been redeemed. And by the merit of righteous women, we will be redeemed right now. You are those women. Every single one is that one. We don't know which prayer will tear the sky apart. We don't know which prayer will open the gates of tshuva to thousands. We don't know. But as long as we're not praying for sure, it won't be us. It won't be ours. You need to pray to open your heart and just be honest. Just be truthful. Be loyal. Express your heart. If it's a sorrow, so sorrow. If it's joy, so joy. If it's hope, so hope. If you lack of hope, so ask for help. You need to be able to be who that you are and to express it to the one that desire your prayers, that he will answer them. And he will answer them. I promise you. Just follow your heart and all your prayers will be answered. I will now bless all of you that are here with us, all of our friends online, and all the rest of the people that will join us one day, that we all will serve Hashem Itbarach, the Creator, in honesty, that we will all feel satisfaction while connecting ourselves to Him that we will all understand His pure intention on creating us as we are, in the way that He did, and that we will connect and commit ourselves to Him with a smile, with a happy heart, with a wishing soul, that we will trust Him to answer all of our prayers, that our confidence and prayer will always be answered that we will find everything that we're looking right in front of our eyes, with no effort, with no sorrow, that Hashem will erase and will remove all tears from His people, and that we will all be able to serve Him with a happy heart, with an honest intention to find everything we need, and that all of our beloved ones will grow will succeed, will have long life, 
of health and holy wealth, happiness and truth. Amen. Can you hear that son? Thank you very much. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.